Hi, welcome to the notes video on Half-Life. So um, all you're to do here in this video is really just to take down the notes so you can prepare yourself for the next class. So this is our Half-Life uh, notes and for me that starts on page 29. So make sure you have the page number and you include it um, in your table of contents. All right, so 1.6 Half-Life. So we learned before about radioactive um, uh, radioactivity and decay. So now let's talk about radioactive isotopes, which are isotopes that are radioactive. Um, and they decay at a certain rate measured by their half-lives. You need more time to pause, uh, to take notes, make sure you pause the video. All right, so radioactive isotopes decay at a certain rate measured by their half-lives. And the half-life is the time it takes for half of the radioactive isotope to decay. The reason why I underline time is because a lot of, a lot of times people will call, consider the half-life uh, as the amount, right? So if, I, so if you start off with 100 grams of something and the half-life is 20 minutes, in 20 minutes you should have 50 grams of it. And sometimes people will say, instead of saying the half-life is 20 minutes, they will say the half-life is 50. Um, so it's important to note that the half-life is the time, not an amount. All right, so why are half-lives important? It's because you use half-life to measure total elapsed time. So in radiometric dating, like with like carbon-14 dating, which is used to date um, you know, artifacts, or uranium-238 uh, dating, which is used to date um, you know, things from um, prehistory, like early formation of the Earth. Um, we use half-lives for that. Um, the other thing is um, you can also use it for the amount of radioactive isotope that you started off with to determine the amount of radioactive isotope that you started off with um, or the amount of the stable daughter isotope you formed. So half-life, you use half-life to measure total elapsed time, radiometric dating, or amount of radioactive isotope parent isotope that you started with or the amount of stable daughter isotope that you formed. So essentially you can get two main pieces of information. How much time has passed um, during which the radioactive isotope decayed or how much of the radioactive isotope that you started off with you have left or the amount of the daughter isotope that you formed. So those are the main pieces of information, time and amount that you can get from half lives Okay, so let's take a look at a table here um, where we have time in hours and the amount of a radioactive sodium-24 isotope, and this is in grams. So G for gram, HR for hours. All right, we always start our time at zero because that's when no time has passed, it's your initial amount. And looking at this table, we can see that we start off with 100 grams of our radioactive isotope, and in 15 hours, we have 50 grams. So that means that this is our half-life, okay? Our half-life is 15 hours. Because it took 15 hours for half of it to decay, okay? Now, when another 15 hours pass, so, from, so when we get to 30 hours, Again, I keep saying divide by half, but it's really divide by two. Okay, so again, going from 50, um, half of 50 would be 25. So in 15 hours, you would go from 50 to 25. And then in another, when another 15 hours have passed, so you would have half of that 25. And so that would be 12.5 grams of sodium left, okay? So you start off with 100 grams, in 15 hours you would have 50 grams. In 30 hours you would have 25 grams, and in 45 hours you would have 12 and a half grams, okay? All right, so how long is it gonna take you to get down to 6.25 grams? Well, if the half-life is every 15 hours, then you just need to add 15 hours to the last time here, which is 45, and that will give you in 60 hours. So in 60 hours, you will have your um, 
you have 6.5 grams of sodium left. So start off with 100, in 60 hours you're gonna have 6.5 grams, 6.25 grams left, okay. So that gives you a sense of what half-life is all about. Now, in this unit you will have to do some calculations and these are the equations that you'll need to know for those calculations. So um, the first one is half-life cycle. So let's go ahead and write that down there. Okay, and I'll tell you what that is in a moment. And the half-life cycle is equal to the number, is equal to the elapsed time, so the total elapsed time divided by whatever the half-life is. Okay, so let's talk about what half-life cycles are. Um, essentially what it is, you're counting the number of half-lives that have passed. So I'm gonna put half-life cycle over here. So if I wanted to figure out how many half-life cycles were at this point, I would just count the number of times 15 hours have passed. So one, two, three, four. So four half-lives have passed, okay? So you can call this the number of half-lives. I could call it a number of half-life cycles just so that you know we don't get the two confused half-life and half-life cycles. Um, but anyway, so that's what a ha number of half-life cycles is. How many half-lives have passed? Now the next equation that you need to know is final amount is equal to the initial amount, so what your, what um, the amount of radioactive isotope you have left, so that's 6.25, is equal to your initial amount, so the 100 grams, divided by two raised to the power of half-life cycles. So let's take a look at an example of that, um, how we can calculate that. And let's do it for this one here. So let's say our final amount is 25. Okay, and our initial amount is 100, we would take the number 2 and raise it to the number of half-life cycles. And in this case, the number of half-life cycles is 2, right? So let's see if that makes sense. 25 is equal to 100 over 2 squared, which means 25 is equal to 100 over 4, and that is correct. So, to, for, so for this equation, if you wanted to find, for example, maybe you needed to find the final amount, you would take the initial amount, 100, divided by 2 raised to the half-life cycle, so you need to know how many half-life cycles have passed, and then you get your final amount, okay? Now let me show an example of how we use the half-life cycles. So to calculate the half-life cycles, um, let's say, for example, um, again, you are, let's do this one, number three. Okay, so in this case, if our half-life cycle is three, and the total elapsed time, which would be here, is 45, and a half-life is 15 minutes, you can see that this equation is a true equation. So maybe in this case, you need to know what the half-life is, but they give you the elapsed time, and you know the number of half-life cycles. So they could give you two pieces of information, you'd have to find one of them, all right? So that just gives you a sense. Now, I'm not expecting you to know how to do all of this right now, but I'm just giving you sort of a preview of what you're gonna see later. All right, that's it for this video. If you need more time to copy, I'm going to lift up so you can see. You can just pause it as, as I hold it up. All right, that's it for this video. Have a quality day.